Hello, I'm Dr. Michael A. Brown. Welcome to Bible Study Tools and Techniques. I am the minister of the Westview Church of Christ, which meets in Huntsville, Alabama, 6210 Old Madison Pike North. The Westview Church of Christ is focused on building family, faith, and community. We invite you to come and be with us at every convenience. But now, let's focus more about our topic, Bible study. Let's now talk about how we got the Bible. This is a fascinating study in and of itself. But a few things are what we're going to focus on for the next few thoughts here. We want to begin with the inspiration of the Scripture. Now, this is something that we said from the beginning is our foundation. But what do we mean by inspiration? It's a very interesting term, and it's one that we do well to make sure we grasp. When we talk about inspiration, we're talking about how God so guided men to write his word and yet allow them to write in their own personality. This is why when you read about, for example, Paul, you read his letters or you read Peter's letters or James letter or even Jude's letter, you'll find some differences in how the letters are written. Vocabulary is different. Uh, expressions are different. So God allowed them to write in their own vocabulary using their own personality. The same can be said about the books of the Old Testament. When you read about Isaiah, when you read Jeremiah, when you read Ezekiel, the various writers of the Old Testament, once again, God gave them freedom to write in their own personality. And yet, inspiration means he supernaturally guided them so that they would communicate in their own words exactly what he wanted communicated to us. This is what we mean by inspiration. There's a term for this. This is called full or plenary inspiration. Remember, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is God breathed. We're not talking about a book that was written by men. We're talking about a book that was written by men guided by God, divinely, supernaturally. So when you open up your Bible, you are reading the words of God. The scriptures have God's breath on them. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. As we think further through this, that word inspiration itself is very important for us to get. It means God breathed. God spoke. And he spoke by way of guiding men to write the scriptures. You can have every confidence that when you open your Bible, you are reading what God wanted for you want it for me to have. Think about this. Out of all the ways that God could have chosen to communicate his truth to us, he chose writing. He chose writing. This is why we have the Bible. But further, as we think about how we got the Bible and the whole idea of inspiration, let's understand what it is not. Often the word inspiration is used to talk about Oh, you might think of some universal inspiration. Perhaps there is uh, some individual who has some great ability. Uh, some of the great song, songstress, some of the great musicians, uh, they're inspired. But this is not the same kind of inspiration we're talking about when we talk about the Holy Bible. We are not talking about partial inspiration either. God gives fully his message to us so that we can gain what he would have for us to know, so that we can live our lives in a way that will honor him. This then again is what we mean by the inspiration of the Bible. But let's think even further. Remember, inspiration is full plenary inspiration, God guiding people to write his word, to share it with us so that we can know his will. When we know his will, we'll be able to follow his will, not in our own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit who empowers the obedient. Thinking further then about this whole idea of Bible study, we base our thinking on the idea, the foundation of inspiration. Now, let's think about how we got the Bible in the sense of the Texas transmission. The Bible comes to us in three original languages. The Old Testament is Hebrew. 
The New Testament is both Aramaic and Greek. When we think of the Old Testament, the Hebrew language had to be translated from Hebrew to other languages and finally to us in English. When we think of the New Testament, Aramaic and Greek had to be translated in languages that ended up coming to us in English. Now, there were various individuals that were utilized in this process. Understand this when we talk about, about studying, studying the Bible. Bible. We are reading translations from over centuries. Various people were used to transmit the text from century to century. Here's some key names. One would be John Wycliffe. Another one would be John Tyndale. These are just a couple of names of individuals who worked to translate the Bible. There is what is called the Septuagint. Now, this is a Greek translation of the Hebrew. Uh, our Bibles are in English, but they didn't begin in English. Our translations in English began from the original languages on into Latin and now to Old English and now to English. Now, there's something else we want to keep in mind. There's a great difference between a translation and a paraphrase. We are working with a translation when we read such as King James Version, New International Version, the New King James Version. These are all translations of God's Word. Translations from the original language that came along through time. Now, the translation Translation is different from the paraphrase because the paraphrase is basically somebody taking the Bible and trying to explain it in ways, translate it in ways, if you will, but put it in ways that are not exactly what the original text would have to say. We want to be careful to recognize the difference between a translation and a paraphrase. I would suggest to you that you be very careful about using a paraphrase because what you're reading is somebody's idea of what God has said. We want to get the key message from God himself. And this is what we find in translations. Now, because English is a living language, translations continue to come out. And they will continue to come out. The Greek language uh, that is the New Testament is written in is not a language that continues to live for us. The Hebrew language, the same thing. But when we talk about our English language, words meant something, for example, in King James Day in 1611, that they don't mean in 2016. And so English is a living language, and we see that even in our day-to-day -day experience. We want to make sure, though, that we have a good translation of the Bible as we go forward. Now, there are some barriers to understanding the Bible. Various barriers that we have to be aware of. And these barriers are very important uh, to get around. One barrier is the language barrier. This simply means that the text of the Bible is coming from a language that is unfamiliar to us. And we have to learn how to try to understand what the words meant in their original language. The language barrier covers centuries. So we need tools that will help us understand what the words meant when they were first echoed by God and then written by the Bible writer. Well, this is the end of our lesson for today. But this is just the beginning of a closer walk with Jesus Christ. Learning the word and living the word makes all the difference in the world in your everyday experience. Come back so we can learn to walk closer with our Lord. Da-da-da.